In this tutorial, we're going to continue with where we left off before, which was uh, we created the bent track that we're going to be using uh, for our steel stud wall. Uh, and the reason why we're adding this to our steel stud wall is so we can add a little bit more um, detailing to uh, openings. Because um, <clears throat> when you think about it, when you're creating your panels with a curtain wall, you actually have the ability to swap panels out differently depending on what they are. Uh, and we'll go over that in this video here. Uh, first things first though, we'll have this, uh, we have this bent track here that we made in the last video. You have to, if you could go back to part one and create this and then come back, um, uh, do that right now. So all I have so far open is just this bent track and then I have the, uh, I have this as well, the actual panel uh, that we made the end studs panel and then I have my level 2 project open as well so there's a couple things we have to do to this panel first in order to get it to work properly so um, an issue that you might have is if you automatically load because theoretically logically what you would want to do is actually just load the new track in and then you're good to go the only problem is, is um, because we made some modifications to the track in terms of the way that it responds to the reference planes you'll get errors where it'll keep asking you to remove constraints every time you switch the track back. So um, this is what you have to do in order to prevent that. So you're at, what we're going to actually do is we're going to actually delete the old track out and then we're going to go to the families here and go to the structural framing and then we're going to actually delete the track type. So um, and that's just so that way we can reload it fresh uh, and we don't have to worry about getting errors. So we're going to go back to our track type up here. Just track. We're going to load this into the project. We're going to load this into just the end walls. Okay. And then we're going to do place on work plane, reference level, that's fine. And then we'll just place that in here. And uh, we're basically going to do what we did in the last video when we first created this, which is we'll snap the middle. And then we'll uh, go back to our reference plane. We'll go to the exterior. And then we'll just take this and drag it and lock it to the, to the reference planes. Now what you should be able to do from here if you wanted to test it out, is you should be able to, oh, yeah, that's right, we have to create a label for this. So we have to create a label for this first. So we'll call this uh, what we called it before, which was bottom track. So that way we can swap it out however we want when we load it in. Uh, won't be an instance, will be a type. And we're going to add that under, I think we put it under construction. Okay. <coughs> So there it is right there. So we're going to take this, we're going to try it out and see what happens. Uh, we'll go to 3 and 5 eighths bend track, hit apply, see, adds it in. So that's exactly what we're looking for. Now if you didn't do this, you just loaded it in, you get an error saying uh, sketches over constrained and then it would ask you to remove constraints which will go back and forth no matter what you do. If you Even if you bring it in, try and fix it and then switch it back, it'll still give you that error. So just make sure that you do that. So we're going to switch this back for now. We're going to actually add a type. So we're going to add a top wall type and a bottom wall type. Uh, so we'll go back to here, hit OK. And then we're going to do the same thing up here. So we'll go back to our Should be good to go from there. So we're going to actually just flex this a little, just so that way we can make sure that our track, so our track's all connected. We didn't get any errors. It didn't say uh, over constrained or can't read or something along those lines. Uh, and then we're just going to turn this back to uh, 3.625. Oops. Okay. 
So the next thing we need to do uh, is create the types. So we're going to add this. So we're going to say uh, 3 and 5 over 8 inch uh, stud wall. Bent track bottom. Now you can do this as an instance if you want. You don't have to uh, make it so that way you have to have a type. I just prefer to do it that way. It's just it's easier to swap it out later. Uh, so steel track. We'll make this one three five eighths bent. Okay. And then we're also I forgot to do this. I'm gonna add another parameter here. I'll we'll call it top track. Track, uh, and then we'll swap that out as a construction. Okay. Cool. <clears throat> and then we'll add another type. We're only going to do three and five eighths. Now you can do this for all of them if you want, though. So stud wall. So for standard, and I'll switch this to top track, track bent. There you go. So if you had a window, for instance, you would swap this one out on the bottom, and you'd swap the other one out on the top. Okay. Uh, and then there's one more thing that we need to do as well. Uh, we need to make sure. So we need to add some visibility graphics here because if you're using a bent track, technically, usually you don't have end studs. So what you have to actually do, I'm just going to go here. We're going to go uh, reference level, exterior. Uh, we're going to check, is this the right side? This is the left side. So uh, we're going to actually make a couple more parameters for these nailer studs. So we're going to add these as, uh, where is it? I'm actually going to change the name of these first. So we're going to name these, uh, rename it as left, left nailer stud. Same thing with this one. Change the name. Okay. And we're going to change these ones. So this one will actually be the end stud. So add left end stud. Uh, this will be a type. We'll go under visibility. Okay. And then we'll go here. And then we'll do the same thing here. going to change these type properties within the bent track types. So we'll actually turn these off because if you remember from the last video, they actually default to on. So uh, this is actually pretty easy to do. So we'll hit uh, go there and then we'll go do that for the bottom. Turn these off. Apply. Hit OK. Uh, and then there's one last thing we need to do here. So because this is usually going to be fitting inside of a smaller space, we actually have to reduce the, uh, I guess, the spacing so that way we don't get errors. Because otherwise, what will happen is you'll try to bring it in, it'll say, uh, can't complete array or something along the lines of that. And then it'll say, delete panel, and then it just won't let you place the panel. So for these particular ones here, uh, we're actually going to change the spacing to something really small, like six inches. And then we're going to actually change the first stud, which is actually causing most of the issue. We're going to change that to two inches. <clears throat> and then you'll see why when we actually 
we actually place it in. So we're going to do the same thing for uh, the top. We're going to change this to 6 inches, change this to 2 inches. Hit apply. Okay. <clears throat> it looks weird right now, but it, eventually it'll make sense when we uh, insert it. So th that's, for the most part, that's what we need to do. So uh, we're just going to load this into project, we'll load it into level two, hit okay. Uh, that's fine, override existing. Uh, and then do override shared subcomponent, hit okay. It'll take a little bit. Okay, so. <clears throat> So this is where our actual panel needs to go. So we're going to select that panel, do the drop down, and then we'll go to the Bentract uh, bottom, and that should fill. So you'll see it actually replaces it. It adds the bent track here. Uh, and then what we can do as well is we'll take this, we'll do uh, edit type, because now we can actually see what we're looking at. Uh, and then we'll change this to the spacing. We'll make that, uh, it should be 16 inches. So hit apply. So now we got two studs. And then uh, based on what your spacing is of your last stud, you can add that into this one. So you can say first stud's probably at like eight inches or something, right? <clears throat> now there's other ways to do this too, where if you wanted it to automatically read where this last stud was, you can tell this one where to start uh, this stud because you can actually add uh, a calculation to it based on global parameters uh, and that's something I can cover in another video if you're interested in seeing that. Um, it can be kind of redundant because then just to kind of give you an overview, if you go to manage, uh, where is it, global parameters, it's basically like creating type parameters for your project. Uh, and they can be pretty handy depending, like if you have a three quarter inch spacing and you have that all over your whole building, it's you can add the three quarter inch here and then give that parameter to a dimension string. And if you wanted to switch it to an inch even, you wouldn't have to do that manually. You'd enter it once and it would change it all for you. But that's for another video. So um, I'll kind of go over how to do the window quick just before uh, we end this video here. So we'll curtain grid. We'll add one segment to here. Just take a second. Okay, and then we'll just tab through here, select it. And top track, and there you go. So that's the same deal. So uh, we'll change this to eight inches and then we'll go edit type and then we'll change this to 16 inches. There you go. And the one thing that's kind of nice is if your window gets bigger, Drag it down. Do some calculations. There you go. If let's say the window gets goes to there now, I'll run some calculations and do it for you. So I hope you like this video. Um, if you have any questions, concerns, or anything, uh, don't feel feel free to leave a feel free to leave a comment, uh, like, subscribe, and I guess I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks.